There are a lot of restaurants all around the world that holds a rich history of how they started, but some of these restaurants have a pretty big impact that they're actually still around. In Kyoto, Japan, built and established in 1465, lies the Ohonke Owariya, which started as a confectionery store as known now as the oldest restaurant in Japan. After the original owners were summoned by the emperor at the time, the shop initially offered its famous soba rice cakes, but eventually began making soba noodles around 1700, making Honke Oreria the oldest soba shop in Kyoto. Honke Oreria has been serving everyone from Buddhist monks to roaming shoguns for over hundreds of years. Specializing in soba noodles, the Japanese imperial family are also known to be big fans. Honke Oreria's signature soba noodles are made from the high quality buckwheat flour from Otonepu and Hokkaido, and the restaurant claims that Kyoto's pure water is the true secret behind the food's special flavor. Soba has been around for a long time and has an auspicious food that brings good fortune, and there are various theories about the wishes of longevity, good health, and getting rid of bad relationships in the old Japanese custom of toshikoshi soba eating noodles. But in any case, soba has become popular as the food brings happiness. In addition, soba is one of the few foods that the Zen Buddhist monks are allowed to eat. And it is a very complete and well-balanced meal. As the rainy season ends and early summer begins, Honke Oraria begins serving homatoen shiro, a dish with fluffy meat and flavor that fills you up. Would you visit? Let me know. La Tour de Argent in Paris, France was established in 1582, and this Michelin rated restaurant has apparently been frequented by the King Henry IV. If that's not enough, apparently the restaurant inspired the 2007 movie Ratatouille with the collection of over 450,000 wine bottles cultivated in its world class wine cellar. It has been valued at about 25 million euros with delicious entrees of fish, foie gras, de trois empereurs, and the whole roast with apple souffle, crepes for dessert, and Tea souffle with hazelnut lime sorbet. And of course, the wine, as you know, there are so many choices. Overall, it does seem like a wonderful restaurant to come by if you can afford it. The average meal seems to be around 185 euro, with some of the appetizers to be around 30. So, actually, in reality, the average meal cost would be around $500. But I mean, it makes sense that it, since it being a Michelin star restaurant and the oldest French restaurant still standing, but I don't know. Would you still visit and pay $500 for a meal? Founded almost 600 years ago, Beyond Yifan located in Beijing, China, is one of the oldest and most popular restaurants in China. Established in 1416, it originated as a workshop slash pub that wasn't as famous, but it was a favorite of many locals and travelers. At the time, they actually served duck and chicken, and it wasn't until the owner began to expand the concept of it being a restaurant where collaborating Peking duck and Spanish and French style duck liver became signature dishes. Interestingly enough, around 1552, there was a Chinese minister named Yang Jisheng who was so hungry that he came across the delicious smells of Bian Nifang pub, and he ate and noted how happy everyone was and how the prices were really fair. Everyone realized who he was, and he signed the name Bian Nifang, which means fair price. As everyone clapped and smiled since then, many of the ministers and his friends would visit the pub. But then the prime minister, at the time who nobody seemed to like, Yan Song, killed Yang and demanded the restaurant owner to remove the plaque that Yang Jisheng had handwriting on, but the owner refused and it resulted in him getting beaten up. But he still fought back, and the prime minister gave up. Since then, he honors the word of the minister to keep the prices fair and to be considerate of his guests. Cuisine includes braised duck, stuffed mutton leg, fried fish, slices and rice, wine, and of course, the roasted duck. Remember guys, it is duck season, not rabbit season, so would you still visit this restaurant regardless of the uh, season? The building that houses the White Horse Tavern was first built in 1652 and was eventually sold to William Mays in 1673. At this time, the original building received an expansion and was opened as a tavern, as many people believe that the White Horse Tavern is the oldest restaurant in America, as well as the country's oldest bar. Since the building is so large, it has historically been used as a courthouse, a city hall, and the meeting place of Rhode Island General Assembly. The building was even used as a quarter of both British and American soldiers during the Revolutionary War, and after several years, of use and neglect, the building was then restored in 1954 through a donation of the Van Buren family and the restaurant was then reopened as the White Horse Tavern in 1957. The average meal costed about $40 and located in Newport, Rhode Island, USA, and the reservations are required as they open Monday to Sunday, 5 to 9. Their menu consists of clam chowder, lobster bisque, French onion soup, beef wellington, lobster ravioli, and crispy pork belly. For desserts, they got an orange vanilla creme brulee, gelato, and their own tavern candy bar, which consists of triple chocolate brownies, salted American chunk gelato, and coconut magic shell with toasted almonds. I don't know what magic shell is, but it kind of makes me think of Mario Kart. In Tanzania, El Membrabet was founded as part of Zaituona's mosque around
around 1630 and is the oldest restaurant in Africa. It serves pies and roasts and is inspired by traditional British pub food. Closer to home in South Africa, Pig & Whistle is the oldest restaurant in the country. Founded in 1832, Pig & Whistle is located in Bathurst, serving classic pub food. And Mediterranean favorites for the modern palate, visitors rave about the renowned pot pies and freshly baked cakes and desserts. In Mozambique, restaurant Costa del Sol is the oldest and the beachfront establishment was founded in 1938, serving up fresh seafood dishes to travelers and locals alike. Prawns themselves are among the famous food items. Established in 1621, Zuten Letzen Instaz is located in one block away from the historic Berlin Wall as it serves the city's oldest tavern. The restaurant received its name in 1924 by the then owner G. Hoffman. Prior to this, the tavern was actually nicknamed Maria Bell. Although the restaurant is one of the oldest houses in Berlin, it was reconstructed in 1963 after taking heavy damage during World War II, and while the interiors are no longer original, their current design reflects the style of the original house. As one of the city's most famous restaurants, several well-noted guests have visited Zur Litzen Instas, including Napoleon Bonaparte, Ludwig von Beethoven, and former German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Average meal costs around $35, and it's closed on Wednesdays, so be sure to book in advance. They also got on their menu potato soup, steak with chai butter, capers apples, veal liver Berlin style, and so much more, as well as warm apple cake and Bamukuchen Parline sauce. I can't speak German. In 1725, opened in the city of Madrid, Spain lies the Sobrino del Botin, where the cuisine bursts in flavors of traditional Spanish and Castilian flavors, and the average cost is about $50 for an overall meal, and they open through Sundays to Mondays for brunch and dinner times. But the history of the Sobrino del Botin began with the cook named Jean Botin. French cook by the name of Jean Botin arrived in Madrid together with his wife and the intention of working for a nobleman from the court of Hasburg. In 1725, a nephew of Botin's wife opened a small in on the Chucureros and carried out a refurbishment on the ground floor of the building. Closing the existing arcade, the Botins never had children and passed the restaurant to Mrs. Botin's nephew and was renamed Sobrino de Botin as Sobrino means nephew in Spanish. Sobrino de Botin then claimed its fame as the restaurant holds the Guinness World Record as the oldest restaurant in the world, although all the other restaurants on this list might be a little bit older. Sobrino de Botin received the distinction because it remains on its original building with the same interior from the 18th century. The menu includes hors d'oeuvres like croquettes, smoked salmon, fish dishes like baby eels, grilled shrimp, Iberian ham, and grilled filet mignon botin. And then of course the delicious dessert like tarta botin, a cream layered cake, homemade cream caramel flan, tiramisu, and cream catalan. But like all the menus on this list, there's just so many to choose from. So Benino de Botin has captured the interest of many authors that have been mentioned in novels like Ernest Hemingway, Frederick Forsyth, and Graham Greene. Today the business is still being run by the third generation of the Gonzalez family, Antonio Llosa, and Carlos, all of them are being dedicated in achieving the Botanese old, age-old commitment to not only spoiling the stomachs of their guests, but also reaching their hearts for the last 300 more years to come. Concerning its rich history, would you check Sobrino out? Rules London makes the rules since its establishment in 1798, making it the oldest restaurant in London. It serves traditional British food, specializing in classic game cookery, oysters, pies, and puddings. In over 200 years, spanning the reign of the nine monarchs, it has been owned by only three families. Just before the Great War, Charles Rule had a descent of the founder was thinking of moving to Paris. By sheer coincidence, he met Tom Bell, a Briton who owned a Parisian restaurant called the Alhambra, and the two men decided to just swap businesses. Charles Dickens, Williams Makepeace Thackeray, John Galsworthy, and H. G. Wells are well many of the others, like Buster Keaton, Charles Chaplin, and John Barrymore, that have visited rules. As part of their menu, they served smoked eels, steak, kidney pies, pork tenderloin, lamb, queenie scallops, rum steak, pheasants, and dessert. And for yeah, of course, and for dessert, chocolate fondant with cranberry compote and vanilla ice cream, sticky toffee pudding, and a selection of ice cream sorbets. Zum Franskener was established in 1421 in Stockholm, Sweden, as her dishes focuses on traditional Swedish and German cuisines, including tartare of tenderloin, tarte flambe, and steak au pouvier with croquettes, and of course their dessert, which I think is pretty sounding pretty good, is the ginger poached pear with chocolate sauce, whipped cream, and almond cooked pistachios. Well, almond cookie pistachios. And Swedish style cheesecake with cherries preserved and cantillon crake on Honestly, I'm so down to fly to Sweden right now just to try these dishes. And being part of Stockholm's oldest restaurants and was founded by German monks in 1421 when King Eric of Pomerania allowed monks to charge for food and drinks. The food that allowed the restaurants to combine the founders' German roots and the flavors of local Scandinavian cuisines brought forth this amazing mix of food. Although the Zum is not located in its original building, the food and drinks have remained the same since it first opened nearly 600 years ago. The average meal cost is about $40, so you do have to make reservations depending on the day. But honestly, I think it's worth to try something new. And finally, like St. Peter's 
Stiftet Keller. Sure, the name sounds like a cathedral, but it's a cathedral of meal since time. All the way since its establishment in 803 AD, St. Peter's is located in Salzburg, Austria, where the food is traditionally Austrian and the average meal is actually $70. Not as bad as the $500 one. You have to book reservations as their hours only cycle through Wednesdays to Fridays at 12 to 11 p.m. and Saturdays and Sundays 10 to 11 p.m. The restaurant is located within the walls of St. Peter's Abbey and is marked as the official oldest long-standing restaurant in the world, supposedly mentioned by the English scholar of York in 803 AD when he served Emperor Charlemagne and Bishop Arno of Salzburg. Although the building has gone through many renovations, many of the original dining rooms still stand as they were carved into the stone cliffs adjacent to the Abbey's original structure. One of St. Peter's hallmark is that of the daily Mozart dinner concerts, which actually performed in the Baroque Hall by Amadeus Consort Salzburg and consisted of about six musicians and two singers who were all wearing period costumes. Pretty cool. Being around for almost 1200 years, it's definitely a world record with being a mix of traditional Austrian dishes and cuisines with a touch of original chef correlated menu. It has been a distinguishing staple of fascinating history. And speaking of history, that's all for today. Thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. My name is Jess and I wish you all the best. Bye.